Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me 320 Sim Pilot. and today we're going to answer some of the questions that have come out of my ILS tutorial video that you guys have had. Hopefully this can help bring some extra uh, detail that you're looking for when you're trying to fly an ILS approach. As always I am a real world Airbus pilot but none of this is for any real world use. There are still plenty of differences between this and the real aircraft but we'll have a look at some of those and hopefully give you some extra context on your home simulations. Right, let's get started. So in my previous video, we already had the ILS set up on the aircraft because I had it set up when I created the flight in Microsoft Flight Simulator. What I want today to do today is show you how to do this with uh, the MCDU in flight. So let's have a look at what's already set up. If I go to plan on the uh, EFIS control and wind up the range to about 20 miles I can now see the route and this is for the ILS 27 left at Heathrow it's the same flight as last time so from Gatwick to Heathrow we've just taken off and I've done nothing else except uh, level off at 5,000 feet and I've left this alone but as you can see it has the flight plan preloaded in this would be the same if you load in the flight plan yourself um, or whether you do it through flight simulator or if you haven't loaded in an arrival yet so you may just have your destination for example Heathrow and it may not say 27 left because it's just a blank destination without a specific arrival and this would all be the same for that as well so it's quite simple really what I have to do is select the uh, destination so I'm going to go to MCDU I'm going to press the flight plan page select the destination and now go to arrival I select arrival and it currently says ILS 27 left via Biggin on the Biggin 1 Zulu that's the star the star is your standard uh, terminal arrival so that is the arrival routing to get you to the start of your approach, which is the ILS. So if I then want to, want to change this, for example, if air traffic give me a different runway or the winds change or, and so on, I can select ILS 09 left. So let's do that now with this button here. So I've selected now ILS 09 left appears there. And you can see a yellow line appears on the navigation display, which is not what is we are flying, but what we have selected now. And that goes around to the other runway. So 09 would be facing east, heading 090 degrees roughly. That looks good to me. That's the route I now want to take because I want to change to the ILS 9 left. And then the star is here. If I press this sideways arrow, I can choose another runway or I can choose the star I want. It's already chosen the big in one Zulu, so it's left the same arrival, but I could change that if I wanted by selecting one of these. So I'm going to select big in one Zulu again. There's no vias. A via would be another waypoint uh, on the way, so it could be a, a slightly longer routing or to apply the full procedure. So in this case, I'm just going to insert, insert, and now, as you can see, that line has changed. If we zoom in, now we're going to fly round and head out by these waypoints. And if I go to flight plan again, I can scroll through until I see the ILS. So now that has correctly tuned. So that was the first big question. How can I retune that in flight? There's another thing we'll need to check to make sure it did select it properly. If you go to RadNav page, you want to look in here and the ILS frequency should be in and the course. So as I said, 090 degrees, it just says 90 in here, which is the heading of that ILS because it's facing east. South would obviously be 180, west 270, north 360 or 000. Okay, now the frequency here, you would need a chart to be able to know what that is. So you can either get that from uh, a source such as Navigraph, which is what I would use um, as I show in my previous video, or you can look here for the sake of flight simulator, if you want to just tune it like this, you can see that it is ILS 09 left and it automatically tunes that. That is the localizer and glide slope for the ILS as well as the DME if it's available on this ILS. The final thing we need to do, as before, select the LS button up here and you can see it gives you the scales um, and then once you're around somewhere close to the runway, we should see the ident appear. Um, so we know our distance to the runway and that it is tuned correctly. It will give us the India uh, or it will give us the ident for that runway, uh, which we'll see um, in a minute. If I show you the chart here, this is the ILS DME for 09 left. And as you can see, we have a frequency India Alpha Alpha. And that is not quite what the uh, flight simulator is showing us. It's showing us India Romeo Romeo, which you can see down in the bottom left corner of the PFT. So there are some differences here. It should say frequency 1103. Um, these things can change and obviously need updating and so on. But if we look in the flight simulator, it shows India Romeo Romeo. And the frequency is correct though, 1103. So this should work because this is what the simulator thinks the frequency is. 
But now we can see on this PFD at the bottom left, it shows us the uh, frequency 1103 as well as the distance to go. If I go back to arc mode on the EFIS and constraints, we get our usual. Uh, so it shows us the altitudes and the speeds it wants us to be at these different waypoints. And it says 18 miles to the runway. If I zoom out slightly to 40 miles range, I can see that actually, yeah, we probably are about 18 miles away. But remember that distance is always just a straight line and it's not reliable until we're really closer in on the other side pointing in towards our approach. So let's fast forward time and have a look at that. Something you can see here is that it says ILS runway 27 right on top of the navigation display. This is not correct. Um, it should have updated to the new approach. So that's a little bit disappointing that it's still doing that. We can also view the ILS. Uh, we've got these scales on the primary flight display. We can also set this to LS and it will show us the same thing. But I suspect this is set the wrong way around. Yeah, it's set to course 269 for the 27 right. So that is a shame. It doesn't seem to have updated because it does say the correct course in here. And this is where you would set this up. A lot of people will get confused. There is a radio panel here, including a nav option where you can tune these frequencies in. But that is only used as a backup. In the Airbus, we tune things through the MCDU, um, and that is the standard way of doing it. So this appears to be a glitch where this doesn't quite work out. The next question I've received a few times is, when do we arm the approach? And what is the difference between the approach button and the localizer button? The localizer button will only follow the lateral profile. So if I only arm localizer or lock, the airplane will just eventually, when it intercepts the ILS, which it won't do until we're facing towards the runway, it will just fly the localizer and it will not descend. And you'll see the glide slope move down below us. What I'm going to do now is to send down to 3,000 feet, which is the altitude we want to be at this waypoint, as you can see here, in order to fly this. And today we're going to do this using nav mode, and then I'm going to arm the approach. And this is acceptable. This is something you do in real life when you're not getting radar vectors from air traffic control, or if air traffic control clears you to fly the full procedure. The full procedure, again, can be found on your chart if you're using Navigraph. So we're going to descend down to 3,000 feet, and as we turn in, we will uh, have a look at the arming of the approach. You can see now, though, it has changed, so uh, it does eventually correct itself. So it now says ILS runway 09 left, and it says India Alpha Alpha. So I wonder if that's because we were facing the wrong way. Oh, sorry, we were the other side of the airport. It shouldn't have done that anyway, but uh, I'll forgive it because it does seem to be working now. If I zoom, change this to ILS now, it's also got the correct course, 089, which is close enough. So we can now follow the localizer. And this gives us the same display. I have had a glitch once where the PFT would not show the correct uh, scales. It wouldn't show these diamonds. But I went to the ILS page on the rows, and it did show here. So that is a backup if you guys find that happens to you in flight. OK, we're not going to arm approach until we're pointing roughly towards the airport. So that'll be as we go around this last turn. Once we're going through north, there's out star. So we're leveling at 3,000 feet, which is the platform altitude. Expecting to intercept at around 9 miles. So to tell how far away we are, we look here. 12.3 at the moment. Sometimes these DMEs aren't available. This is called the DME. If it isn't, you may need to use a VOR, which I'll cover in another video. Right, now we're pointing towards it. I can arm the approach. So to get both, I want to arm that. And this time it does work strangely. So we get glide slope and localizer blue, which is correct. I'm going to put out flap one so we can start to slow down. And I've got manage speed, so it automatically reduces for me. So there's localizer, which also works, unlike in my previous video. And I'm not sure what the difference is with the way I've coded it, perhaps because I've selected it myself. So there's localizer. So it is actually in localizer mode. It should fly onto this diamond. And now here comes a glide slope. Okay, so as we reach that diamond, I expect it to go into glide slope star. And we get straight into glide slope, that's fine. So now we are following the localizer and the glide slope. So this time it is correct, both modes are working. 
I've had this happen a couple of times where by changing the flight plan in flight to the correct approach, it does work. But when I left it from my pre-planned route, it didn't show me the localizer. So I, I don't know what the difference is. There seems to be some uh, bugs hiding somewhere in there. Right, we're now on the glide slope. I'm going to put out flap two. Flaps to two. And the speed will continue to reduce accordingly. We are now established on the RS into 09 left. As you can see, I can now select LS on here and we get the same picture. There's our localizer. But it is more intuitive uh, if you're not sure about flying ILS, is this display is quite handy. So if this diamond is off to the left, then you are right and you need to go left to get onto it. Likewise, if this diamond is above you, then you are low and you need to uh, reduce your rate of descent to re-establish on it. But if you're using the automatics like this, then this is fine. And we can check everything is working in order. Right, let's go gear down. Flaps to three. And finally, flaps to full, our landing flap for today. Final question uh, that came up quite a lot is when would you disconnect the autopilot? Because I left it quite late in my last video. Well, that's going to depend, but you could fly this whole approach without the autopilot and follow the flight directors, or you could fly it without uh, any of these automatics. What I'm doing here is showing you a way to fly this approach and that will hopefully give you a better sense of the automatics and get more comfortable using the Airbus autopilot. So there we go. Once again, we are stabilized and ready to land by a thousand feet. It does depend. Different airlines will use different altitudes for that. So I can disconnect the autopilot now, so I will. So there is autopilot disconnected. Now why it does this, I don't know. I, that is incorrect. It shouldn't go to open descent. It should stay, because it is ultimately still flying on the localizer and the glide slope. That's what the flight directors are asking me to do. The thrust levers stay in that climb gate until 30 feet, at, at which point you reduce them to idle, at least by touchdown. They must be at idle before you touch down, otherwise the engines will spool up again as you land. There does seem to be this glitch in the Airbus where it suddenly rolls in the flare. So now idling the thrust levers, they're now at idle. They're right on the back of that throttle. There's the touchdown. And we're looking for our reverses. So reverses out, which, there we go. Reverse green and desal. Took a bit longer. I need to make sure I memorize that key a bit better. Desal means we're looking for you normally get a decel light up here, uh, it's not working here, but it can also mean deceleration here. This is what we're looking for, actual deceleration, which is this trend arrow down to make sure the airplane is reducing in speed. Okay. Here is that same approach, but with the issue I talked about. So for this one, I uh, went around and reflew it. And as you can see, it does not appear here. We don't get localizer or glide slope, yet it is following the localizer and the glide slope, but I can only see that by choosing it up here. So hopefully, um, maybe even by the time you watch this, uh, this has been fixed, and I hope it has. Because this should appear on here like it did for our first approach. That's all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been able to answer some of the questions you've had. Please keep all comments and questions coming, and hopefully we can get around to them in another video soon. There'll be more streams and tutorials upcoming. Thank you very much for watching.